It's very expensive. I suppose the way, the way that I did it, obviously, was by getting the factory to do it for me for free. Yep. But what I was doing prior to that, <laughs> what I was doing prior to that was I, was I was making those samples myself. And what I would do was, I, it was just situational. I lived in that share house with a model agent from Premier Modeling Agency. And all of those models dated Premier League footballers. And I was like, shit, they got heaps of money. So I should probably get on their team. So basically what I'd do is I'd put on red wine and a dinner. All of the girls would come over. I'd put up my ideas for the new collection, some samples. And they'd start giving me feedback. And then they'd have more and more wine. And then they'd give me really honest feedback. And they'd be like, because they're in fashion and on catwalks, they'd be like, oh, zebra's the next thing or whatever. And then I'd literally just go and do it. <laughs> Anyone else? To tenacity, I would put down to, you know, it's everything that got me to where I am, whether you think that's successful or not, whatever. I think that... The most important thing is the way that you develop relationships with people, uh, whether that's one-on-one -on -one in a business development sense or with an audience in the way that you can interact and, and perceive that. And what that's been able to do for us is to make a lot of friends, to make a lot of networks, but most importantly, to build a lot of trust. And I would suggest that our entire business, whether it's through the educational, like the courses we provide, you know, st the starting a business course and the blockchain course, to the membership that we have where you're sitting next to a random at the beginning, to the enterprise stuff where we work with Flight Center and Brisbane Airport Corporation and Heritage Bank. We need to make sure that all of those parties continually trust us and we're delivering on whatever we promise so that the whole ecosystem flows together and you start building a groundswell. So we work from high school all the way to enterprise. We're trying to build that entire trust network. But the answer to your question is, continually developing relationships and actually giving a shit? <laughs> I'm actually scared of the thought of you doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I <get my> train. <laughs> no sugar, double espressos. I'm having a baby in November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before November. <laughs> that makes a difference. Sure. The I mean, the, the only difference between the two, let's call them like a small business person that's trying to do something, you know, typical versus someone who's trying to change the game is their mindset and the way they go about business. In the end, the actual company structure is basically the same. Uh, people who are trying to build highly scalable software need way more staff. However, the entire way they run the business should be the same. It's just whichever one leverages technology first and whichever one is happy to survive in chaos because it's an absolute mess. I mean, I know guys at Adidas and I know guys at all these big companies. You look on the outside, it's like this really amazing Adidas, you know, whatever. Bullshit. It is nuts in those companies. And it's because they're adaptive to change. They put out a shoe and they get a tweet that says, black on that shoe is rubbish. They change it same day. You know, that's the difference between a small, like a small business person going to a normal market versus someone who's trying to create something amazing. The, the, the support, it's really the same. Everybody, everybody has breakdowns, everyone needs to know how to manage staff, everybody needs how to uh, you know, know how to use software and leverage it, etc. It's just all about whatever you're trying to be. Cool. <laughs> it, it's always a balance uh, is the answer. If you're trying to run your business and grow it off your own cash flow, so not external investment, you have to be really wise about you know, the, risk that, the risks you take and where and how you spend the money. Uh, I think in the end, it's the people who move the fastest who are willing to make the small mistakes, like I said, doing the trialing, that are always going to get ahead further. And it's all about the way that you perceive risk. The way that I perceive risk, for example, opening my second building when I didn't really even know what I was doing in the first one was the fact that I knew this tender was coming out, I knew it was the biggest thing Queensland was ever gonna see, and I knew that I could survive through the shit. If I could just win that, we would be like the number one, you know, for you know, a long period of time. And so I was more than willing to make a mistake, spend money I didn't have, because I knew that I'd work hard enough to make that part work while I could juggle this. And it was all down to this, Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but this is really important. 
It's all down to this, basically. If you have eagerness to learn and you're willing to work hard enough, you can do anything. It takes 10,000 goal-oriented, dedicated hours to be an expert at something. I'm not saying if you do 10,000 hours at basketball, you'll be better than Michael Jordan because he's probably done 500,000, but I am saying you can become an expert at something. So if you have that mindset and you are keen enough to learn and you continually put, yourselves in, put yourself in those situations, then you can take on anything you ever wanted. I do it all the time. I get asked to do a keynote, a keynote on something I have no fucking idea about. Maybe it's blockchain. And so I say, yeah, for sure I'm expert in blockchain. And so they lock me in, call up all my friends that know things about blockchain. I buy 10 books on blockchain. I read it all and I talk to them. And I'm basically an expert. M massively. Personal development is, is everything. You know, every decision, the way that I've developed our strategy, the way that people have followed us, etc., has been a reflection of me. But now it's, it's the, when, once you get to a certain stage, the business is going well and it's got like a big reputation, you start taking yourself away from it because you become the choke point. And so you start having to learn things you never knew before about managing people, for example, and how you can delegate successfully, how you can empower them, uh, to like with your knowledge with processes and so on and in that way you get to step away a little bit and then personal development becomes everything because if you're ahead of the game you can navigate you know that Titanic toward whatever it is your dream is but when you're in the business doing it's really difficult to step away so you need to make incremental plans about how you can build a process around your knowledge or your skill set and also how you can continually train your staff member to one day take that over. You need to plan it in terms of timeline, you need to plan it in terms of the tools, you need to plan it in terms of the cash flow. But you need to make that an incremental goal right now.